What's going on YouTube? In this video I'm going to be talking about how to set up an IP camera and how to access it when you're outside of your network, maybe at work or on vacation. And for this video I'm going to be uh, using the D-Link wireless, uh, let's see, I believe it's the 522L. It's uh, the Dome PTZ camera. You can pick it up at Staples or Office Depot. It's about 250 bucks. So the first thing you're going to want to do is plug the camera into the network. After you get it plugged plugged in and you see that it's powered on, you're going to want to open up your web browser and log into your router. If you're using a, a Netgear router, chances are you're going to be logging into 192.168.1.1 and then put in your credentials. Okay. After your your main page comes up on your router, you're going to want to look for the attached devices. Okay. Now this this page lists everything that is connected on your internal network that is being routed through your router. I have multiple devices connected. Um, let's see. The MAC address ends in AA97, and that would be this one right here. So it has an IP address of 192.168.1.7. So now that we know that, we can log into it. Disregard the port right there. I had previously set this up. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, you're just going to put in the 192.168.1. In this case, it's 7. It's going to be something different when you know you do it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to assign this a static IP address. I don't like using DHCP because the IP address constantly changes. I like knowing what the, the IP addresses are. And in order to do this, click on Setup. And depending whether you're connecting through an Ethernet device or you're going to use wireless if your device has wireless, you're going to choose one of these two right here. Now, if you're using something besides a D-Link camera, like if you're using a Logitech or a Netgear, it's all pretty much the same same concept here. When you go into the firmware of the device, you're going to have um, the, pretty much the same choices that's laid out here. It just is going to look a little different. So under the wireless setup, that's what my uh, 522L is using. It's using the wireless, and I have it connected to my wireless repeater downstairs. Now if you are setting up the device for the first time and you're gonna to have to connect it through Ethernet and that's how you access it you know in order to enable the wireless you have to connect it through the the hard line first and then go in enable the wireless and then unplug the Ethernet and reboot it and then it should pick up on your wireless under the wireless configuration you would just have to scan find your network put in the security mode the key and you make sure you save the settings then you after you save it it'll reboot and during that process you can unplug the ethernet wire and when it comes back up it should be connected wireless and then you can go back to your router page and verify it you could just hit refresh and if you still see your device that means it is connected through your wireless and you're good to go but now what you're going to want to do on the on the same page of your IP camera firmware, you're going to want to set a static IP address and that is done usually under the network uh, network option. Now I'm using 192.168.1.7 you could choose uh, any, gosh, you could choose probably 255 numbers, you know, just go back, make sure something else isn't taking up that IP address and assign it. The subnet mask, you can, unless you you have a certain subnet you want it on, just leave it on 255, 255, 255, 0. 
Now your gateway, your gateway is whatever this IP address is right here. 99% um, of the time it's going to be a 192.168.1.1. So you're going to put that in. You could think of gateway as the gate to the internet. So your internet comes through your router, so obviously this is the gate and hence gateway. And under optional primary DNS, I just usually leave that the same as the router because the router deciphers the uh, DNS. Uh, under optional, I don't put anything. So the four main things is the IPv4 address, your subnet mask, your default gateway, and your optional uh, DNS. Now, since you assigned it a static IP address, you can you can uh, configure a certain port under your HTTP. If you're going to have multiple items set up under your router that you're going to want to access, you know, when you're away from home, this is where you should assign a certain port. And keep this port in mind because you're going to need to know these if you're out. I gave this uh, port 1206. So now that I know it's port 1206, you have to go back to your router and you have to find the port forwarding information. That's usually somewhere under the advanced section. You can see right here, port forwarding, port triggering. Now, here you can see on the bottom, I have it already set up. The D-Link 522L. The start port is 1206. The end port is 1206. And the internal IP address is my 192.168.1.7. So that's basically letting the router know that when it has a request for port 1206, it's going to forward this IP address. So if you were to go on another tab and just type in what's my IP, Google will tell you your IP. You could just uh, copy that, paste it in here. Now, depending on what port you choose, mine was 1206, and you hit enter, it's going to bring up your device. And there it is. This is my uh, D-Link 522L. And you can, you know, you can do this for any any one of your devices if you'd like to. I usually the reason why I do a custom port, I I don't leave it as default, is because my router is the default port address. Like if I was to take away the port, depending if your router, it you know, accepts remote manageability, which I believe. Um, that my router doesn't. I believe remote management, let me see, turn remote management on. So now it should work. And you know, I have a certain port for my router, which is port 2000. So if I was to put 2000 at the end and then hit enter, it will bring up the dialog box to enter my username and password. Oh, that's why it's secure. See, this is why it's good to, you know, keep a mental note of this because you can easily forget. I have mine set up where it's secure, so it's not loading right here. But if I put this in, the HTTPS with this, that IP and port 2000, then it will come up. Proceed anyway, and here is my Netgear R6300. So... If you are, you know, if you're saying, well, how am I going to know my, if I'm out for on vacation and what if my, what if my IP changes? If I don't pay for a static IP address, what if my IP changes? Well, then there is a nice solution for that. It's called Dynamic DNS. It's a free service to use. Um, if you have a Netgear router, you can, uh, it might have it built right in where you can choose. There it is right here, Dynamic DNS. And what you do 
you choose a service right here. Um, in this case, it only offers one, but there are many to choose from if you just do a Google search for it. You sign up for it. You choose a subdomain, like, say, uh, home. You can choose uh, home, and when it registers, it'll give you an address of home.dyndns.org. And then that's the only thing you would have to put in the address bar. And it constantly is in communication with your with your modem so it constantly knows your WAN IP address so if it changes it's gonna know so the only thing you ever have to remember is your domain name and that comes in handy I do I do use it um, I do I have a Synology server so I do have my um, dynamic DNS set up through Synology and I use port 5000 for my Synology box and you can see my subdomain is kerpic.synology.me port 5000. This is automatically going to redirect to a secure port 5001, as you can see right there. And <clears throat> this is going to bring up my Synology Disk Station Manager. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. I'll get into dynamic DNS on my next video. Hopefully I give you some insight on how to set up an IP camera. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask, and I'll do another video explaining you know, the question that you had. I'll try to go in-depth with an answer. And uh, subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of giveaways. I gave away a Canon T3 Rebel last night. I got a bunch of other stuff that's going to be going in the next couple of days for about probably every other two days for probably about the next two weeks. That's the active stuff that I have uh, on YouTube right now where I'm giving away stuff. And then there's just a lot more to come. So definitely subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you guys, and you guys have a good one. Take care.